I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Welcome to Single Shot at Roundtable at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Tonight we have uh, a very interesting guest, Joe Olman. Thank um, you. Artist, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this uh, artist is uh, a person who is working on uh, merging uh, science and art in what he creates and uh, his underlining idea of uh, his artistic pursuits is ultimately freedom of expression. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of your works, John, uh, John uh, excellent and uh, beautiful works, but uh, as I understand, you have a very specific purpose in mind when you're creating them. Yes. Uh, I base these projects uh, oftentimes on a specific timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, and my ultimate goal is to interact with someone, with a stranger, and record that interaction, have some detritus from the, uh, from the project. Uh, so the main premise is actually uh, interacting with uh, a stranger and getting him to be involved in the artistic process. Often. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, I explore, uh, my work explores issues of um, gender expression, gender identity, my own identity, my own expression. And oftentimes that manifests itself in this interaction with strangers. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the work is a conversation with myself uh, for public consumption, uh, how I fit here in my world, in my society, in this culture, as a photographer, as an artist, each role that I play and that, and I, the work I make explores those roles. So basically uh, it's about uh, multiple roles an individual can have in society and in his not own personality. I, pardon me if I'm rephrasing it in the wrong way. Of no, I, I think it's great. I think. Uh, it's fluid. It's fluid. So uh, the premise is that uh, the role is never hundred percent defined. It's always changing. It's always modifying, right? Yes. Yes. I think uh, my roles are always modifying. Are always changing. There are tropes. There are comfortable lines that I ex that I. Align uh, that I uh, align or malign myself with, mm -hmm. and then there's uncomfortable lines uh, that I press myself to okay. to experience. So basically, uh, the that goes back to uh, the freedom of uh, self identification in terms of gender, in terms of art, in terms of self expression. Ultimately, the question is so dear to all artists and everybody uh, who beliefs and freedom in general. So as I understand, uh, this is very important part of what uh, your works actually reflect and as a final result, as the final product for consumption of your viewer. Uh, I've had a viewer, the, I've had a great experience with viewer and one of those, one of the best experience was a guy coming up to me and saying thank you for doing this. And, uh, and that's nice, it makes me feel good, you know. Uh, I hope it says be, I hope my work says be yourself. I hope I am myself, my best self. No, definitely. Uh, like Absolutely. So, uh, talking about the freedom of expression, uh, I do recall a very interesting project that you uh, have, as I understand, on an ongoing basis. The uh, walls uh, of New York streets, which you're covering with uh, the artworks. That's so a... 
that project was great. Uh, I did several of those here in mm -hmm. Manhattan. Um, I enlisted the aid of friends, and we would we paste uh, images up on construction boarding. Did one down at Wooster Street. Um, I did one on Larry Gagosian's new space before that space opened, um, and it was about self-promotion and about expression. Uh, someone, when I was putting that one up on Larry's, someone yelled from across the street a derogatory, a derogatory slang for gay person, and uh, and I yelled back. But later, when I when I they said you're here you're everywhere now you're on the now you're on the side of the street um you know basically get the heck out of here you know and uh and my response was you know probably explorative you and and but i was retelling the story and and this woman said to me you know people used to cat call me and and that it stopped when i started walking up to them, introducing myself and saying, hi, I'm Kristen. Uh, why are you saying those things to me about, why are you using that kind of language with me? You don't know me. What's up? Are you lonely? Are you, are you scared? What's going on? So, so basically this project in a way was uh, pushing freedom to some kind of limits where they, they was tested against uh, how our society is capable of functioning with uh, everybody. Yes, that's yeah. that's so uh, it, indeed it was ultimate freedom. Let's include everyone. Absolutely. So uh, the meaning of your projects, what uh, you was uh, doing with uh, this wall installations, what you was uh, trying to tell, trying to show. Uh, I remember that you was mentioning at some point uh, that uh, it was uh, for by persons who don't come to the gallery. It absolutely speaks to uh, viewing work inside the the commercial space and free access. And though there is free ga access in galleries, there's a difference uh, crossing that threshold. And in this case, I don't give people the option to look or not look in that it's in the public sphere and, and they they can look away but they saw it at first. I think it, to see it in the gallery you have to step across the door to the gallery. Mm -hmm. So um, when I did those projects I, I, I didn't do any explicit photography. I, I do uh, provocative work. Provocative, absolutely, yeah. But uh, I feel like that sort of stimulation, that erotic stimulation is more exciting for me if someone experiences it thinking about the work later than if they experience it right there in front of the work. And I think that's a difference right. with ex explicity. Explicit explicity. Explicity. Mm -hmm. explicity. Oh, well, uh, that actually brings uh, the whole project to uh, the condition of actual art installation uh, in terms of art performance, not just a still installation that everybody sees. It actually is expecting interaction and uh, not just reflection on it or just throwing a glance, looking at it, maybe thinking something about it, but actually actively interacting it, uh, with it, at least within themselves. Absolutely. I yeah. hope that uh, my work creates conversation between people and within the viewer. It yeah. certainly does with me. Um, <laughs> definitely <laughs> provokes internal dialogue, I can tell that. <laughs> and uh, speaking about it, uh, do you think that uh, your approach to a uh, technical side of uh, photography, the actual way you're taking uh, your photographs and uh, the way you present them, uh, at least in the recent works I see some of the uh, more traditional photographic style works from before and we probably will have time to talk about them later, but uh, what is, uh, what I've seen from more recent part of uh, your artistic portfolio, looks like it was intentionally basically uh, brought down in terms of uh, looking specifically artistic photographic. It looks very plain. It looks like a, a story you tell to, to the stranger on the street or the story you overhear on the subway. It's I, just my personal impression. Pardon me if I'm uh, incorrect in the way. No, I hope so. It. 
I hope so. Uh, I'm thinking on the way here tonight about uh, photo albums of mm -hmm. that archival huh? uh, remnant of my life, and, and less mine uh, than my mother's or my grandmother's. Mm -hmm. And that, that memento, and what happens to that memento? And you know what happens to this currently this this Instagram feed? Absolutely, yeah. You know my that everything is caught and it's stored and it's stored for what? Why are my story? What are you? St <laughs> I still die. I can take as many. I can excuse me. I can take as many pictures of myself as I want. I still die. Like. Wow. Uh, as the pictures will be left. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, 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 that no. definitely will happen. <laughs> oh. What's the music? So uh, we was talking about your methodology, and uh, one question I wanted to ask: uh, uh, Are you using field cameras, or you uh, using digital? I use almost exclusively digital now, and I the my camera of choice is an Android from about three years ago on my phone. Uh, so I still take so ultimate Instagram huh? SLR. <laughs> I still have a, a I have a digital SLR. I still have my analog SLR. I haven't shot analog film in quite a bit. Uh, just for my curiosity, which uh, which brand of uh, analog was you using? Analog was the Canon. Canon. Yes, and Nikon. I use I, I've oh, used, both used both Nikon and Canon. Yeah. Wow. So you're one of the very rare examples of people who don't care whether Nikon or Canon. I don't care. There is a huge it's rival going <laughs> on about it. I don't know if you heard about it. I I believe in across the aisle that we should find great things about. Absolutely. All of us. <laughs> I, I also do it so. I use both and uh, many other brands, uh, but uh, there indeed there is a rival, and we're actually planning to make a piece uh, eventually on that specific question. I, would, I love that. Canon versus uh, Nikon. But Someone like Android. <laughs> on the, Android, on the table. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, d but despite of uh, uh, intentionally and uh, very uh, well produced. Uh, naturalistic, instantaneous look of your images. Uh, as I understand, your art have a huge component of science and specifically of psychology. And uh, there is this uh, project which uh, uh, actually made me to meet you and invite you to our studio, is uh, the project that explores the self-identity of a person in terms of masculine and feminine side. I believe you do have uh, uh, the actual uh, Walk with you. I Would you mind to I show have it a to us? Poster with with me, and then I have when this 
work was originally produced. It was produced as the poster, mm -hmm. uh, which is here. Yeah. Incredible. So, uh, as I understand, this is the series of photographs of uh, males exclusively. You have only male images here, who uh, was asked to pose as their masculine and their feminine side. That's correct. And uh, without prompting, so oh, I without if, prompting. Well, no, I mean, I mean, I asked them that question, but I didn't say, I didn't give them my ideas. Excuse me, I didn't give them my ideas I'm on sorry, how they that. They was basically just uh, their their showing their creativity reaction. in that sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of them actually uh, look very similar, but some of them uh, shown quite a difference of personality. Do you think it's uh, accidental or it's uh, something specific to how different masculine and feminine side of the individual is? I think it's uh, how comfortable I am with the two sides. So uh, if I can, when you, when I asked you what could I wear to the, uni to the interview and you said wear something that presents yourself, well I could wear this or I could wear uh, the the jumpsuit which I, I brought in case I had time for a <laughs> 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 I was going to do this as a physical performance uh, I'm not going to do it now but the because I'm, I'm more interested in talking with you Absolutely. but uh, I'm uh, I'm always aware of what I'm projecting right mm -hmm. It's why I choose the thing out of my closet, of or how I comb my hair. Even if I, or if I choose not to comb my hair, if I choose not to, that's still a choice, right? For most Absolutely. of us, for, yes. for most people. Um, and so I think it's always a question of what am I coding? What am I, you know, what am I coding? Mm -hmm. What am I sending? What messages am I sending you? Yeah, so. If uh, we want to summarize uh, the outcome of this project, what message uh, your models was trying to send to the world uh, when you was asking them? Well, it's uh, sadly uh, in the in the minds of most of my models, uh, men don't smile, mm -hmm. and uh, or masculine <laughs> smiling is not a masculine trait. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sticking my hip, uh, my uh, my feminine trait is how high I can get my ass, my buttocks, <laughs> uh, becomes like a just a physical trait, Absolutely, you know, yeah. that that we attach these uh, tropes to gender. Right. So basically, uh, your models was uh, considering females ultimately more free and friendlier. I hope. Uh, that's that's what I got from my uh, explanation. Uh, the that's interesting. If I may summarize it, right? I I tell the story of my brother and and his wife and their two. Mm -hmm. They have can you twins, uh, two and a half year old twins, and and they're learning to eat. And the girl has uh, long hair, mm -hmm. and so her hair is constantly in her food. And it because she's a girl, she's eating uh, not constantly, you know, it, it, but more so than the boy who has short hair. Huh? So. We attach these roles, we attach these tropes to kids that, um, yeah, We're at, now I lost it. Why am I telling you that story? Uh, you asked was, about... Uh, talking about self-identity, yes. Yeah, these codes. And, and so, um, turn off all cell phones at the, be <laughs> at the beginning of the show. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice you're popular. Mm -hmm. That... Uh, and you asked, oh, and so I was retelling that story about how terrible it is for this girl to have long hair. That mm -hmm. she, yeah. you know that girls feel like they have to have long hair, and then mm -hmm. ultimately maybe women feel like they have to have mm -hmm. long hair. Or drag queens choose long hair as a trope to be, or transgender someone who's transgender and is male or female may have choose to have long hair because of that trope. You know, this is feminine long mm -hmm. hair. Now I'm s sitting next to someone who's quite masculine, married, who I, and you have long hair. So then, like, there's this whole crazy, <laughs> like, tropes. <laughs> it's from my hippie childhood. Nice, I, I love I a hippie. <laughs> yes, I used to be a part of Russian hippie movement. It's a long story. But uh, getting story back I to the uh, question of the family, as I understand, uh, you uh, had a project that was uh, related to your father. 
specifically Marine uh, Corps photographic uniform. project. Yes, the uniform project. So I asked uh, strangers on the beach in Miami to pose wearing the Marine Corps uniform. I shot that project in color analog film mm -hmm. and processed it as color film, uh, color negative, and then uh, printed black and white to a, for, uh, to a fiber, to thick fiber paper. Mm -hmm. And the result uh, makes them timeless in, in many ways. It's hard to tell what decade the photo was created. Absolutely, it could be created yesterday or 60 years ago, easily. And there are some clues in some of the photos, like in, because of who's in the back. There's some of the images have something in the background that that give you a clue. But uh, I remember my great uncle saying, "Joe, this could be my platoon," you know, and and he was in World War from World War II when he saw that project. So I, I, that's a great project. I'm thankful to all the strangers that said yes. Um, at that time, when I made that project, Eve Fowler, another artist, uh, was making these portraits of um, rent boys uh, from a local pub in the West Village that's no longer there. But um, And other people were uh, making these serial portrait projects. Um, this one is really special to me. Because of that connection, it's the it's the way I first saw my father was wearing that uniform. My father was in Japan during mm -hmm. Vietnam War when I was born, so when he came home, he was in that. Like that's my first. So, so uh, the premise of uh, doing this project was basically seeing how a uniform in its ultimate form, something uniform, something that uh, works uh, for everybody, will look on different people and in a way uniting them, right? Uh, the thing about that project, quickly, uh, someone asked me to explain that project and I went in this long and in depth reason of why I do the projects and afterwards they say, oh, I don't like it as much. Because that's how it will <laughs> That's how it happens. I hope you'll ask me about that once. All right, so uh, we have only a few minutes left, and customary, we're asking uh, our guests to uh, give an advice on uh, something they do really good in photography. And one of the things Joe does perfectly is actually sourcing his uh, volunteers for his projects. They involve uh, always a lot of people, and uh, sometimes they're very provocative in a way they uh, shape out. So it probably is not so easy for you to do this. How you do it? <laughs> Be comfortable with rejection. <laughs> uh, and ask. Ask everyone. Uh, I did a project last year where I used an uh, internet dating mm -hmm. hookup app to find models and probably had 600 people in, in 15 weeks respond. And not all of those went beyond the initial tete-a-tete -tete with the text messaging mm -hmm. or direct messaging. But uh, 
I, I, at that project, I got 15 out of 600. Now, the Internet's much easier, but when we were talking about Marine Corps uniform, uh -huh. uh, I probably asked 80 and, or 90 or 100 or in those four days, 20 to 20 people a day, 80, and got 23. So keep asking. You, well, you, insistence, huh? Well, no, not insistence, but uh, tenacity or perseverance. If someone says no to me, I never insist. Well, I'm not talking but about you, that kind but of my, insistence. Yeah, yeah, yes. Insistence with a project, me. not insistence with a person. Insistence with the project, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and and believe like I believe in the work I make. I I make honest work. I make I share things that are pretty tight with me. And uh, as long as I keep doing that, then I don't care if someone says no because they're in there. What we were going to say, what I was going to say before the break. I started to tell this person all about why I did something. Uh, and, and they said that I didn't like it as much because they didn't get to attach themselves to it, which is the joy of visual oh. art, that I get to bring my stuff to that project. And so I basically just say this is what I did as opposed to why I do things. And maybe that was the fumbling in the first part of this interview for on my part I mean, why do you do this what do you want I do it to stay a lot like to stay alive right I, lifestyle it's <laughs> well or, or yeah it's a lifestyle but it's it's um, it's the way I interact it's the way I communicate it's the it's where I feel my best oh, self then, is. Uh, ultimately that's what art is about communication connecting people freedom of expression and you do it all and you do it so great <laughs> thank you very much for joining <laughs> us today it was really a great show and uh, i'm looking forward to see more of your work thank you Alex. hopefully Thanks for in metropolitan <laughs> museum one day right <laughs> hopefully uh, I, you put my website up right yes so that the met can contact me <laughs> thank you are we done, done now or, or does it just keep playing the found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.